This MLB offseason, free agency, is going to be dominated by one former Japanese baseball player, Shohei Otani. But it's also going to be dominated by a current player in the NPB, that being Yoshinobu Yamamoto. The hype around Yoshi is extremely high. Countless MLB teams and fans alike are hoping and praying that Yamamoto is going to choose them. We're talking easily the most hyped up Japanese prospect since Shohei Otani when he signed with the Angels in 2018, but probably the most hyped up pure pitcher since Masahiro Tanaka or Yu Darvish. And there's pretty good reason why. Yoshinobu Yamamoto is the back to back to back winner of the Eiji Sawamura Award, which is basically the NPB's version of the Cy Young Award. Oh yeah, and he's also won the Pacific League MVP Award in back-to-back -back seasons as well. Yoshi's resume really speaks for itself. In seven years, Playing in the Nippon Professional Baseball League, Yoshinobu Yamamoto has posted a 1.82 ERA. Not to mention the two no-hitters that Yoshi's thrown in back-to-back -back campaigns. He is also a world champion and a gold medalist. Yoshi was a huge reason why Japan was able to take home the gold medal at the 2020 Olympics and also help Japan win in the 2023 World Baseball Classic. And we'll get into why Yamamoto is just so dominant on the mound, but let's talk about how exactly he's going to get to Major League Baseball in the first place. It was announced yesterday that Yoshi's NPB team, the Oryx Buffaloes, are posting him. To put it simply, the posting system acts as kind of a transfer portal for NPB players to come over to play Major League Baseball. The system was created to ensure that NPB teams are going to get fair compensation for losing their star players who want to go play overseas in Major League Baseball. And now, there's been a lot of various rules and regulations throughout the 25 plus years that the posting system has been in effect. There's been many criticisms from both NPB organizations and MLB organizations alike. To put briefly kind of the history of the posting system, when it first came into effect in 1998, the system worked as kind of a silent auction where MLB teams blindly bid on obtaining the sole negotiating rights to an NPB player. Whichever MLB team has the highest offer, they're the only ones that can have contract negotiations of potentially signing the Japanese star. And then all of that auction money is going to go to said player's NPB team that he's transferring from. And after paying that posting fee you still have to work out a contract with that player. So it became very convoluted and very expensive. There was a couple really insane posting fees that we saw for players like Daisuke Matsuzaka, who the Boston Red Sox paid $51.1 million for the sole negotiating rights. All of that money going to the Satama Cebu Lions, who was the team Daisuke played for in the Pacific League. And it happened again a few years later when Yu Darvish fielded $51.7 million posting fee. The Rangers paying that to the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters. Major League Baseball got upset with how crazy the posting fees had started to become and also the silent auction system really benefited only the big markets because a team like the Red Sox can afford to basically write a blank check and easily outbid anybody else. So years later, the NPB and MLB came to an agreement that currently more reflects a typical MLB free agent period. And this is how it'll work for Yoshinobu. The NPB team he played for, the Oryx Buffaloes, have announced that he will be posted. Next, the Buffaloes must give a 45-day posting window. You can look at it as a negotiation window. 45 days for him to come up and make a deal with an MLB team. If not, his rights will be transferred back to the Oryx Buffaloes. All things considered, Yoshinobu is 
basically a free agent. He can talk with any MLB teams that he wants, so he can find his preferred destination and contract. As far as the posting fee, it's a bit convoluted, but this is the best way to explain it. The MLB team that's gonna sign Yoshinobu has to pay the Oryx Buffaloes 20% of the first $25 million of the contract, 17.5% of the next $25 million, and 15% of any additional money afterwards. As for Yoshinobu, there's been lots of speculation at how big his contract is gonna end up. He's only 25 years old, which puts him at a great position to field really big offers. Most estimates from MLB insiders claim that Yoshinobu could be looking at high $100 million range to low to mid $200 million range. And then the posting fee on top of that with the estimates given, probably around $30 million. It seems pretty clear that Yoshinobu Yamamoto is in for a record-setting contract for a foreign player in Major League Baseball. The current record was set by Masahiro Tanaka. He signed a $155 million deal with the Yankees in 2014. And there's lots of teams interested. We're gonna talk about that in time, but first, Let's talk about why all these teams want Yoshinobu Yamamoto to play for them. Yoshi is primarily going to rely on four pitches. His fastball sits at 94 and 95 miles per hour comfortably, but it does have some upside. He hit as high as 99 miles an hour on the radar gun just this past year. His secondary to work off that is the destifying splitter. It has so much movement. It drops on you so quick. Hitters are gonna have a very tough time adjusting to that. He'll also mix in a cut fastball. This one a bit slower, 92, 93. And he'll finish off with the curveball, which has tremendous break. Looking at the mechanics of Yoshi, his arm slot, his release point is pretty traditional. Now what's cool about his fastball is he'll mess around with the grip and less break of the pitch. His fastball will break at one o'clock all the way down to about 2.30 at times. And when he mixes that in with the cutter, which pretty much stays completely straight, it is pretty damn tough to pick up on. And with the cut fastball being a good five-ish miles per hour off the four-seamer, it works really well as a nice kind of off-speed fastball, especially when you look at that splitter that he has, which again, he's gonna change the break on it. Sometimes he's gonna throw it more straight down and sometimes it's gonna have inwards break. Kind of reminds me a bit of Nate Evaldi's splitter that dominated the postseason in the Rangers World Series run. The sequencing on the four seam when he's able to locate it on the corner of a strike zone, transitioning into the splitter. I mean, look at the overlay. How how exactly do you expect as a hitter to be able to hit that? Yoshi is aggressive. He likes to throw strikes. He likes to work around the strike zone, which really reflects in Yoshinobu's walk rate. The last three seasons where he won the Sawamura Award, his walk rate stands at 1.9, 2, and 1.5 respectively. He is adamant at getting those first two strikes, and then he'll play around. He'll make you chase with that split change or the curveball. And speaking towards his aggressiveness, that curveball, Yoshi is not afraid to throw it on the first pitch. A kind of pitch where if you're not looking for it, which most hitters won't be assuming a 76 mile an hour curveball is going to start above their head and drop into the strike zone the first pitch of the at bat, it's almost a free strike. The curveball really does remind me of a fellow Japanese pitcher, Yu Darvish, and just the destifying drop that it has vertically. I should mention that Yoshi will work in a slider here and there, not very often, but look at this pitch. He really ought to think about throwing that more often to the bigs because the late break on that is crazy. Yamamoto works very quick as well. He's gonna transition extremely easily into the pitch clock era that MLB currently sits in. Now, of course, the adjustment in general coming from the Nippon Professional Baseball League to Major League Baseball is not an adjustment every player's been able to make. The NPB is extremely good. Hell, we saw Japan win gold at the WBC this year, but the game is played a bit different here in MLB. However, from everything that I've seen, Yoshinobu Yamamoto looks like an absolute professional, 
and I really don't think he's going to have much trouble getting used to facing MLB batters. The velocity, the break, the sequencing that he's been able to do in the NPB is going to translate very well in Major League Baseball. So I think Yoshi's up to the task, and he's going to make an immediate impact. We saw Kodai Senga in his first year in Major League Baseball become an all-star. I would not be surprised if Yamamoto is going to do the same thing. And now, as for what team is going to be lucky enough to land Yoshinobu Yamamoto, there has been a list of primary targets for Yamamoto at this point, that being, and not limited to, the San Francisco Giants, New York Mets, St. Louis Cardinals, Philadelphia Phillies, Chicago Cubs, New York Yankees, Boston Red Sox, Texas Rangers, Los Angeles Dodgers, Detroit Tigers, and the Arizona Diamondbacks. All of those teams have had some sort of major involvement, whether it be scouting or talking to Yoshinobu Yamamoto already. But I'm super excited. The sweepstakes are on. It seems like more and more fans are getting word and learning how good Yoshinobu is, and everybody wants him on their team. And I want you guys to let me know in the comment section below, where do you think that Yoshi Yamamoto is going to wind up?